Okay, great. Um, so thank you all for joining us today uh, for today's webinar, uh, which will be presented uh, by Father Art Picaro, who is the Assistant Vice President for the Office of Mission and Ministry here at Villanova. You've been here for, what, five, six five years, years now? Yeah, it was yeah. my sixth. Yeah, wonderful. So it, it feels like a, a father feels like a, a, a regular staple and as someone we could not have possibly operated without. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy that he's here at Villanova and willing to share uh, his knowledge with all of us today. So thank you, Father. Oh, thanks very much, Lisa. My pleasure to be here. Uh, my background is such that I, I'm from the Bronx in New York, and I spent most of my life uh, from 1971 till 2015 in Peru. There were 12 years in which I was centered in Rome, the, the central government of my community. But most of my time has been in Peru and Latin America. And so that affects who I am and how I'm able to contribute. And today you'll see, particularly on this topic of sustainability and ways of teaching, how my own background comes out. And I hope that uh, we can have a little conversation about that. Uh, but to start off, not being from the Bronx, it's hard to know much about agriculture. But I did learn a, a certain amount while I was in Peru. I was told that you sow what you hope to reap. You plant what you want to harvest. Sound reasonable? So sustainability as the topic. You're interested in that topic, either for teaching purposes or for sharing purposes or for living purposes. Sustainability, what is it? When I say sustainability, what do you think of? If you can go think about that for a couple of moments while I babble on here a little bit about this methodology, and then hopefully share very briefly or, or at length, what you understand sustainability to be. Because if that's what we are hoping to reap, if this is what we're hoping to harvest, what is it? What is it? So we keep our GPS fixed on where we're headed. But many times we're not headed in the same direction. We understand different things by the same word, the same concept. Important to, to clarify sustainability. Pope Francis, who was one of the guiding lights uh, in, uh, on this particular topic because of his interest, but not only his interest. Previous to him, there are other popes, but bishops' conferences and Christians throughout the world who are interested in the topic of a better world, a better world. In uh, his document on care of our common home, which coincides with the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, the Paris uh, Climate Conference. He, he's very clear in his understanding that everything is interrelated, that everything is connected. So when he talks about sustainability, he says it's really important for us to hear the cry of the planet. And that might not have been too present to us in, in modern times, Christian terms, to be ready to hear, attentive to hear the cry of the planet. But he says the cry of the planet as well as hear the cry of the poor. Both are significant and both are interrelated. It can treat one without the other is what he's proposing, that it's not science alone and it's not faith alone, which are going to help us to live in a more sustainable world. It's the interrelation of those, science and faith, how they're connected. So a method for forming ourselves, for forming our conscience, for forming our character, which takes into account others is not going to be the one that comes from above. It's not the absolute truth. Many people, when they think of the Catholic faith, will think of the, the catechism, the catechism of the Catholic Church. These are the answers to all your questions, so to speak. If you had any questions and you found the answers in here, you let me know. Because that is not 
what this methodology is trying to help us understand. Real problems faced by us, listening to one another, listening to what we feel God has to say about it as well, to form our conscience in order to act. So this method uh, is a way of, of establishing ourselves with some personal equipment in order to navigate in the world to achieve what we feel is our goal, sustainability, God's goal, a better world. So problem solving more than absolute truth from outside of us, telling us what to do. It's us discerning what we can do, but will lead us towards our goal. Sound all right? So the methodology is participative. The methodology is each one of us from our own experience, from our own knowledge, share, and then try to allow ourselves to be enlightened as well as uh, by what we think, but what others think and what the other might think in order to act. It's not simply intellectual knowledge. It's in order to be better able to act in the world to achieve a sustainable world. So having said that, sustainability, how would you define, what would you say sustainability is in your understanding? You can't be wrong because it's your opinion. What do you think sustainability is? You might laugh, but you can't be wrong. You'll have to- I'll, I'll, I'll break the silence. Thank you. To start the process. <laughs> Um, I mean, I think to me, I, I've always really liked the Brundtland Commission's definition of uh, sustainable development is the ne of meeting the needs today while, without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. And the reason I like that um, is one, it's, it's easier to remember, <laughs> pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, you know, it, 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 it's open, right? So you can fit a lot underneath it. It doesn't try to define everything. Um, underneath it, it, it kind of, uh, it's, it, 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 as a result has like easily evolved with the movement of sustainability as it's kind of grown and, and matured over the last, you know, two decades or so. Um, and it, it does focus on people, which I think sometimes is, uh, at least in popular culture and in media, how we talk about sustainability doesn't always talk about people. Um, you know, it's, it's more focused on the planet, like trees or specific animals, all of which are important. <laughs> uh, but I think uh, it loses that connection that people need to themselves, you know, to, to humanity, to be able to feel the passion to do something about it. Um, of course, now I'm losing more and more faith that that is something that will motivate people based off of what's happening with coronavirus, but that's a whole different conversation. <laughs> So that's real life. That's what that's real life buds in on our definitions and our ideas. Yeah. Thanks. Anybody else? Sustainability? What you, what you feel it is? What you think it is? Sure. I mean, I, I agree with Liesel's definition, and it's one that we often use when we when we teach this. And, and and I think in more recent times too, I think there's been a little bit of a shift in maybe a focus towards the present. Um, so I would say to ensure equitable availability and access to natural resources, such as clean water and clean air to all populations, mm -hmm. for all populations, I should say. Uh, good, yeah, that adds uh, some elements there. It's mm -hmm. emphasis on now as well mm -hmm. as, as future generations. Good. So, so I'll chime in. It's, I'm an ecologist and I work in the, places that some people would call wilderness. Uh -huh. And I'm one of those people that's not such a huge fan of the Brundtland definition because it's so people-centric. You know, I work in an area where white people first appeared maybe 40 years ago. And it was only First Nations people. And we see the activities of people harming the environment in ways that we can see as scientists and the First Nations people can see from their perspective. 
but the people who are developing, which is mainly the oil industry, think that their activity is sustainable. And so I prefer a more ecological definition. And I think the Brundtland Commission is more of a sustainable development definition. And I, I think sustainability in more ecological terms, so. Great, and diversity, great. balance of one off the other, that's not just one or not just the other, the importance of being able to listen to one another and, and hear, oh, I didn't think of that, did I? That who's really promoting these ideas? Okay. Yeah, I think when the, the idea of sustainability is uh, balance, you know, living in balance, you know, the, the, the pattern of consumption, distribution, and conservation, you know, of uh, all of our resources, uh, but that idea of seeking right relationship and balance so that it's a constantly moving uh, target or constantly evolving. It isn't, um, you know, there isn't a fixed number to it or even a fixed approach. It's something that I think we'll always be seeking uh, but we'll know it when the, we, we reach, I think, a certain balance. Okay, so there's a, an element to emphasize there in balance. It's people, it's the ecology, it's the environment, and, and a certain balance. Anybody else? That... So as Sustainability in the sustainability plan of the university, which we've been working on for a while, it pulls in some of those aspects. It's uh, everything for all, forever. Everything for everybody, always. All, all for all. And hopefully that gathers in some of the elements which we've talked about, but might not express it entirely. Bringing it up to your class so that they help enrich the system because many times people will think of only one side of it or the, emphasize one and they would not have balance enough that's principally climate control or it's all about us what about future generations and what about so it, it's not just the cry of the planet is what francis is trying to say it's also the cry of the poor it's people that all things are important all has been created by God. So a way of broadening all of our definitions to something that we can accept together, that we'd be willing to commit ourselves personally and as a group towards helping achieve, rather than being told, this is the truth, believe it. That's not why, I, I would hope, that's not why people come to Villanova or, or seek education. It's sharing knowledge and knowledge is experience. And I might have some experience and all of you have your rich experience. And even with all of us who are together on this, it's not complete. If we're humble enough, willing enough to share what we believe and we feel, what we think we know, but realizing that, I guess we really don't know it all, huh? We need one another. We're in this together. And that's the idea of the Catholicity of an Augustinian education, which is what we hope is we're trying to achieve together. It's universal. It's universal. It's meant to be inclusive. It's meant to be enriched by the diversity. So Augustinian, it's, it's unitas, unity. The unity is not uniformity. This is the absolute truth. You've got to believe this or no. It's unity exists from diversity. The appreciation of diverse, and not only appreciation of diversity, but the celebration of diversity, that we are different. We each have our own identity and we do have part of the truth. The second veritas. Nobody's got the capital T, or if you do, let me know. But I believe that we're in this together and we discover together more of the truth. We search together. So unity, not uniformity. Diversity, without a doubt. Harmony is what we look for in sustainability, a better world forever for all. But it means we realize that nobody has, nobody has everything. 
and nobody has the capital T. If we're in it together, we're humble enough, and yet we realize we all have something to offer, and nobody has the, the entire bag. And that leads us to the third element, uni, unitas, veritas, and caritas, charity. We do this out of love, out of concern, out of care. Francis titles this document, I Care for Our Common Home, to encourage us to care for one another by caring for the rest of the planet. What we do with our garbage and gives us a hint of what we truly believe. If we say we respect people, what we do with our garbage enters into it. Everything is interconnected. Does that make sense? So the wisdom of Francis of gathering together different thought patterns from different ages and different cultures around the world and proposing this as a way of thinking and dialogue and getting together. Because the process is the goal. Doing it together, becoming aware together aware of others' needs and not just other people, but other parts of the planet, other elements of creation. Becoming more aware allows us to respond more fully, to become more fully alive. And that's the goal. Full, fully alive, flourishing, everything flourishing as it was intended to be. And it's always going to mean bouncing off one another. But that means being willing to say what I think and what I feel, not feeling that, oh, I don't have anything to offer. I, I don't know anything about this. My experience, whatever that is, being willing to share that, but also having the ability to say, I need to hear what other people think. I don't know it all. I don't have it all. I need to hear your side of the coin. So not thinking only of past generations, but also future generations. Not thinking only of white males, but thinking of all people and not judging or only be concerned about where I'm from, but the entire planet, all of creation, where we're headed and headed together, that we're in it together. Does that make sense? It's a methodology which Francis is trying to, to promote, which is highly respectful of people. And the document on care of our common home, what, what he says there, in the document, he does, using the methodology, which is becoming fairly popular in the church now, very much uh, how things are thought through, both theology, philosophy, and in Latin America, it's see, judge, act. Those three stages in the process of coming to act upon our world, our lives, ourselves, in order to achieve that everything become more fully alive, everything be able to flourish. So the methodology is what I would, I would say, I would encourage you to think of as possibly sustainability in action. If in fact, I come into a classroom and say, this is the truth. This is what, this is the answer. Well, then I'm immediately disrespecting those who are there. Now, I have my own opinions, but so does everybody else in that classroom. Oh, but they don't have a doctorate. <laughs> but they have a doctorate in their own experience, which I don't have. So the challenge of using a methodology which tries to implement the values which we def feel define who we are as a university for a better world, not for ourselves. So not to discount at all the importance of saying or providing information, but realizing I don't have the whole bag. We need one another. This is my proposal. What do you feel about that? It's looking for participation, 
learned participation, encouraging students to read, encourage students to articulate their ideas, their feelings, their thoughts on, on these topics. But it's modeling as well as living the experience of what we hope to achieve sustainability for everybody for always. See Judge Jack. Does that make sense? Is there a question there, a comment on, on the why of this methodology? Will it work for you in your classroom? That's another story. Will it work for you in your life? I would think it could be helpful, but So Father, I wonder if, have you, have you used this methodology in your classroom and how have the students uh, responded to that? First, so. first though, Dan, there's proof in the pudding because he's been in my class. I, I, the course that I, I teach one semester of the year is uh, Theology of Liberation and I use this methodology. I attempt to use the methodology. The course that I'm teaching in this semester and taught last year at this semester is, is Stewardship of Creation, Environmental Justice. And so trying to actually live the, the, the method and encourage participation, it's not easy. And I imagine if everything's online, it'll be even more difficult to get students who don't know one another. There are typically 18 students in the class. It's more or less a seminar size. They're from all different colleges and sophomore juniors and seniors, although this particular semester, almost all of them are, are seniors we get them to be able to feel comfortable enough to participate because right off the bat they don't know one another to get over that but then they feel well I don't really know anything and to convince them that I am really interested in hearing what they think and what they feel as opposed to what they think they know that abstract, absolute knowledge. So most people coming into to the class, Lisa on theology will say, oh, here's the expert. I just want to soak it in. And, uh, and I, I know it's uh, uh, disruptive and can be, be uh, difficult for the students, in the, at least in the first third of the course, to feel that they actually are being listened to. But if they are listened to, in my experiences now, after having taught, I guess, 10 semesters, 11, yeah, 10 semesters, and I taught a master's course at the same time of the same topic, I'm fairly convinced that all of us can, can be uh, deluded into believing that our opinion does count, and that by the end of the semester, we can actually participate. But it means really believing in the 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 methodology itself, that the methodology is the goal. So what I hope to reap, what I hope to reap is respect for the dignity of each and every human being, that we all have something to offer, that there's nobody who has nothing to offer. Do I have something valuable? Yes, but it's not everything that's valuable. And to convince the students of that by throwing questions back to them, asking them to say what they think, that. You can't go wrong there. Say what you feel as fact is a different story, but what we think or what we feel, that's mine. I own it. I respect it. So it, it, uh, it's only through experience that I feel it's become easier. And it's the way I teach. It's the way I, I preach. I hope that's the way I live, that not coming in as the person who knows the expert in this, because I do have experience. But I certainly don't have Kelman's experience in the wilderness. I've lived in a different reality in the Andes Mountains, but your experience has got to be entirely different and, and enriching. And, and I can say that for, for each one. Dan's experience in Africa, uh, Catholic Relief Service, beyond my ken. And do I want to know about that? Would it be great to have the opportunity to be able to share experiences and then extract from that our common knowledge, our common understanding of truth. So it, it is a difficult methodology because students as well as professors come from a system which the absolute truths 
be they philosophy, science, theology, to enlighten those who don't know, fill them up so that they can regurgitate. I'll give, that was my education at Villanova. That was late 60s, early 70s. Asked me some of anything that I learned at that point in time, it probably had very little to do with what the professors were teaching. Were any of you teaching? No. <laughs> so the methodology is a challenge, but I, I, I feel it, it, it works. So see, judge, act, the th three moments. If, uh, uh, a couple of minutes just to go through them very, very lightly. And then you, uh, Lisa will send out um, a more developed document, so a couple of pages on, on it. That I'd be very happy to try to uh, answer any questions you have on that whenever you have them. My email is there. And, but the idea that what I see is from my point of view. As objective as I try to be, I enrich myself if I try to see from your point of view as well. So C is not coming in as the one who knows, but come in who one who wants to share. And I need to know more. I need to know what you think and what you feel, how you see that situation. Okay. So observing, I am enriched if I allow myself to hear how you perceive the reality, what you think of sustainability, or what you think about uh, race, or what you think about the social inequality. We share our feelings, realizing that that's our ideas, our feelings. And they're not the whole story. Okay, so that's the first step. And that gets people involved. Put my ideas out on the table and willing to listen to somebody else. I'm showing respect for the other people and they're showing it for me. That's a challenge, but it's learning how to live. Make sense? So, so Father, can I uh, make a couple of comments? Great, good. Uh, you know, in addition to COVID, we have other things going on in our country with Black Lives Matter. And I've read through the uh, Instagram at Black Villanova mm -hmm. uh, posts with some degree of consternation and, uh, and distress, actually. And I think your methodology is particularly appropriate in these times when we're trying to uh, do better in terms of interacting with people of color on campus. And it's clear from the at Black Villanova posts that many of our people of color, our students of color on campus have not felt comfortable uh, speaking. Uh, and I see this when I interact with First Nations communities as well that you know, it's a little bit sad, but, you know, they're more comfortable talking to old white guys than young people. <laughs> I don't know why, but they are. Uh, but they're very reluctant to talk about what they really think uh, to people who are not First Nations people. And so I think your methodology is uh, one that we could all learn from. Uh, I think we need uh, a little bit more humility in our classrooms. So, thank you, Calvin. I a disclaimer: it's not my. It's a methodology I use. I didn't create <laughs> it. I'll give that to God. But it, it, the church has really been uh, in modern times as well as early Christianity. This was the way things were done: discover God in us. We don't bring God to anybody. We don't bring truth to anybody. We through our questions, hopefully, respectfully, help people discover good and God in themselves, the best in themselves, and willing to share that. So that, the methodology I, I truly do believe in, but I know sometimes it's more appropriate than others. And I, I, I certainly feel now, currently, it, it's very appropriate for us in the United States, difficult, because we, we are the center of the universe. And for us white males, and worse on Villanova's campus, to be a Catholic white male who is an Augustinian, how can you not be super privileged? 
So to be aware that my opinion is just one opinion and God does not speak only through me. And a lot of times God does not speak through me at all. It's a matter of being able to truly respect and want to desire to listen to one another. The second step is listening to God as we understand God. And you'll see that in the document, God speaking to us in the dignity of each and every human being, not because of the color of skin or how much money they earn, but because they are image and likeness of God, sacred. And the importance of the common good and not just my good, personal good. We're willing to sacrifice in a society which is very individualistic. Me first, to think of the common good. Be willing to sacrifice, you who are parents or grandparents, know what common good is about, sacrificing on behalf of your children and, and do it in the neighborhood. And then the uh, act of participation, subsidiarity, that we're not in this to be passive or to complain about somebody else. We're, we're in this together to be in, involved, to make this together a better world, not just for us, for everybody. And the fourth quality, the fourth value is, is solidarity. It's not a level playing field. Some people don't have the advantages that we do. It's an inclusion. It's actively leaning to allow others. It's being quiet so others can speak. It's supporting others. So those four values, which hopefully can illuminate what we discover when we see, dignity, common good, subsidiarity, and solidarity, so that we can act. Not that we can know, that we can act to make this a better, what's the next possible thing that I, that we can do to make this a better world? So the, the, the methodology leads us, encourages us, the path is towards action to make it a better world for everybody. And with that, I think Liesl's leaning in because of the time and rightly so. But I hope that I've interested, piqued your interest enough to read a little bit more about it and I'd be very happy to share in the future. Yes, Father knows my, my Zoom body language well. <laughs> yeah, so I just, I want to be respectful of everyone's time um, and definitely want to make sure that if anyone has questions or additional comments that we get those in, um, but also just want to make note of the time real quick. No one has any more comments or questions. I mean, this was great. This was really wonderful, Father, and it gives us a, um, a, um, a view or a lens to think about how we, we interact and, and deal with a lot of these challenging topics today, not just around sustainability and climate change, but um, as Cal mentioned, societal issues as well. So it's really helpful and wonderful. Um, and as mentioned, uh, we will be sending out an additional documentation for everyone to review uh, in conjunction with this wonderful, uh, but, and lecture is not the right word, I don't know. <laughs> Presentation, something like that. Words escape me at this moment. Oh, my pleasure. I'm very glad to have the opportunity. Thanks for the invitation, Liesl, and thank you all for yeah. joining in. Appreciate it. I'm going to stop the recording now.